this episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. Okay, okay, well, thank you very much for coming along. Um, I'm going to talk about short codes, um, and I thought maybe um, we could just have a quick show of hands. Um, who knows what a short code is? Do you all use short codes? That's great, good. I thought that would uh, be the case. And um, has anybody tried, has anybody worked with coding, actually writing your own short codes in PhD? Okay, yeah, maybe just under that, that's great. And um, how many people here have edited the functions.php file? Does that mean anything to anyone? Okay, yeah. About the same number of uh, code short codes, so that's great. Um, so I'm just going to um, cover short codes and then I'd like to look at a few coding examples and maybe encourage some of you to try and write your own short codes and, and do a bit more with short codes. Um, so my name's Max and I'm a coach at Prompted, um, which is a company that does WordPress coaching. Um, it's coaching, not training, so we work with you. Um, you get a WordPress sandbox to practice in so that you don't wreck your own install for your company um, website. Um, there's weekly support calls and weekly Google Hangouts where we help solving technical problems either related to the course or with your actual WordPress website, so we want a lot of value in that. Um, and um, if you see me later, I've got 15% off vouchers, and we can go online with the codes and go EP60 start now. So if you're interested in a bit more about that, catch me later. Uh, so, short codes. Um, so, short codes are, if you're not familiar with them, it's a method of basically embedding some kind of really nice HTML functionality in a post on a page. Um, you're probably most familiar um, with them for galleries or videos. And so it's just a, it's essentially a text method. So you just put square brackets and then make of the short code. And um, gallery, embed, audio, um, CP7 for contact forms. Um, but you can also wrap content in a short code. And then the, um, and, and then the syntax is slightly different. You use a square bracket and then a slash. It's a little bit like HTML with the square brackets. Um, and then the third example here, you can also pass data into the short code, um, often the URL of a video or a sound source or something that you want to be formatted in a particular way. Um, so short codes are a great way to get particular formatting, or if you work, if you are trying to do something complex in HTML. Instead of using the text editor to try and put in all the JavaScript and CSS and HTML into the text editor, you can wrap it all up in a short code and then just use the short code. And if it's something you put in a lot of pages, a lot of pages and a lot of posts, then it's a nice way to get that content, uh, repeated content in a lot of places. Um, so short codes you know, I'm sure you guys are familiar with these. Um, the first one's most obvious, which is Gallery. Um, but you don't often see this because WordPress actually manages that for you. So when you're putting a gallery into one of your posts, it's actually driven by a short code, um, which is gallery. And um, the other one is caption, which you'll sometimes see. So this will format an image, and it will take the your caption text and format it nicely underneath the image. And um, the others are audio and video. You can use a little audio player and play your audio. And uh, video, if you've uploaded video to your media library, it's really nice way to get a video player in your pages or your posts. Um, and then the last one here is embedding. So it's a really nice short code feature. You can just put in a uh, URL from a website such as Vimeo or YouTube or Flickr. Um, and then WordPress will go to that page, pull in the embedded content, and display it really nicely in your pages or your posts. And the more recent versions of WordPress, you don't actually even need the embed short code, so it's, it's even shorter now. If you just put um, a, a video or a YouTube URL on, online in your post or your page, WordPress will filter it and display it as a video. And, really nice. um, and then at the bottom there, I just listed some. So most, um, most plugins, so if you've extended with plugins, and um, most 
was supposed to have short code she might be familiar with and PW player, PW player uh, plugin, but on a slider, which makes it a taking images plugin, and, and of course contact form seven, which is a sort of I know need to read the list of favorite plugins, so we'll maybe go keep that later too. Um, so, I thought we'd talk about a little bit about short code magic. So, um, traditionally short codes are used in Pager and Post, um, and maybe you've tried to put uh, short code somewhere else, but it hasn't worked. So, what you can do is alter your functions.php file to add in a couple of filters. The first example is on the text widget, and it basically sets you on the do short code function on the text widget. So, um, if you're familiar with you can go to widgets, you can drag in a text widget, which has done so it's very exciting because all it does is display text. But with these filters, it can display short codes. So short codes for videos and editing audios, the gallery short code, any short code you can now display in a widgetized area on your website. So that can be quite powerful. And then uh, the second example here is using short codes in the Excel. So um, you might want to have some function, but you might have some functionality in your post. But when it, your site displays the XR, you, you lose that functionality, you, use, you lose that formatting. And, and if you try to put a short code in the XR, you'll see it's a stranger with the square brackets, and in fact, it's very good on your site at all. Um, so again, into functions.php, you can add uh, these two filters, and then that will make sure that the short code filter is run on the XR, and then it will display any short code in the XR. And we're going to have a look at that. Um, so, a short code ideas, and um, you can output different code on different pages. And I quite like this because often, um, if it's a category page or an archive page which is listing more than one post, you just want to show a summary of your content or maybe a particular image, or if it's video content, you just want to show the video rather than the content. Um, whereas when you go to a single page, you might want a lot more information. Um, so, it's really nice idea. Um, it's really handy for repetitive code. So maybe a signature, if you want like a photo, a little image of your signature, and maybe some of your contact information. You write your own short code for that, and you put that into your posts. And you might have certain links that you want to send people to frequently. You can just put those in. And use the short code for that. And I mentioned before any kind of style of content. So and maybe if you're trying to do a particular styling, if you're familiar with go to the text editor. And then put in your own HTML, your own inline CSS, um, but you could code it up and then just use a short code for it. Um, some of you said you're happy writing in PHP, but another great thing about short codes is the do short code function. Um, there's a syntax there, you actually you just pass in the string with the square brackets of the short code, because the short code is just a text filter. So it'll filter that text and replace it um, with whatever the short code needs. So you could use that anywhere in a WordPress template. Um, and when you're writing your short code function, which we'll look at, um, you can actually use the functions to do different things with your short code and then make your short code display different, um, different material or different, uh, different styles. And um, so whether it's a category, a single page, a home page, or whether you're, you're in the loop, um, or whether you're in a budget. Um, the codex is a great resource here. Um, uh, who's familiar with WordPress codex? Yeah, there should be more hands up here. You've got to know, you know, love the codex. The material on the codex is fantastic. I encourage you all to look at it. Um, and there's uh, really good information on conditional tags and uh, the do short code function. And we can get all the little down on that do short code. Um, so a couple of gotchas. Um, don't use square brackets and cite the attributes. You can see the little fail at the end. So if you're passing something into a short code, um, try and avoid square brackets. Um, and earlier, we talked about the syntax, but um, you can have a short code on its own, but you can also enclose short code. Um, but don't mix them up like this. Only use one. Only use one or the other. Um, and some more, if you're writing your own short code, you need to give it a name, um, but don't use hyphens. Underscores are okay, um, it's traditional just to use one, one word. Um, and um, you 
can use uppercase attributes in the, in the attribute name, but you're going to run into trouble later, so just look at uppercase attribute names. And, and as I mentioned, the codex is great to read the API, just a slash short code API. So if you're, if you're going to try to codex some of these yourself, which I encourage you to do, it's really fun. And you can read through the, the API. And, and then just find the link. And for the included team coding, you will understand what the last tool means. And if you want the auto paragraph filter, it's a texturizing filter, so then you need to call it yourself as part of the short code function. <coughs> so yes, a couple of coding types you mentioned, um, WP, auto and texturize. And um, there's a few short code functions which will run um, the short code. And, and it's and the content is passed into the function, which you'll see in a minute. So checking if the content is null is often useful. And finding out if you're on a singular page or a category page is something very useful. And, and we mentioned using short codes for complex format things. If you're doing a lot of HTML, it's useful to capture it using PHP's and object output buffers. And don't worry if you don't know what that means. That's for the people who know what it means. Uh, okay, coding time. So I thought it'd be fun to look at some examples.
Great, so I have uh, a comment, I'm commenting the filters, and let's so press up the file. It's great, it hasn't broken. And so we'll go back to um, the test post, and if we refresh the page, you'll see that this here will change. Yeah, great, so you can see that I've got a nice little bit. Um, so the code behind that, Here's notes to sell. So okay, okay. So don't here finish up this post later. Just do about your own. So I can leave notes to me. <coughs> if you've got other editors or contributors, you can leave notes in the post and just surround it by the short code and then it won't display because the short code just returns on. Um, so you can have um, short codes that take in um, images or different things from the media and then display them in size or in different ways. Um, this short code here is prompt text signature. Um, so in, uh, in here, um, it shows as it shows as max. Um, but if I go into the single post page, then it shows uh, my full photo and the signature and a bit of details and some information about me. So that's an example of a short code, it's just a little if, and it says if is singular, then you put out for everything, otherwise just a very quick signature. So there's lots of, lots of different uh, fun ways to use uh, short codes. Uh, I haven't been watching my time. I'm okay, I'm in. Do you want to do like two or three more minutes yeah. of any like, questions? Yeah. Thank you. Um, oh, yeah, so we mentioned. We mentioned the XRs as well. So um, I put the filter in for the XR. And uh, in twenty fourteen in twenty fourteen theme if you if you search and search page page will show XRs. So you can see these are the um, short codes in the XR. So you can see I've got it here. Um, and this is another example of short code just like a piece of those um, I mentioned, um, actually, I want to show another example. So these are some pages I've, I've already pre-loaded. So um, here on this website, each of these presentations is its own little blog post. Um, and so there's a lot of information, there's a portrait, there's a title, um, there's a company, there's a top title, there's a person, there's a job title, there's their slides and there's their, their videos. 
and but we wanted them all to display nicely and in a big room like this, so you can see they all sort of go on. This is something that does, does a lot of presentations. Um, but then when you click through um, to the single page, um, you get a portrait and little slides, and then actually there's a little video. Um, so this was just all controlled through a short code. So that's that's the short code. It's a bit small. But this is this is all all you need to do in this thing because we the way we put the short code. And the short code is called presentation, and then you just as attributes you can put the speaker name, speaker title, a link to the image, and a link to the, link to the, the video file. And then the short code format it could use everything else. It's a really convenient way for this for these people to continue to put in presentations every time they have a conference. Um, and then I would just add um, And I've got a little function somewhere. Maybe you think the code isn't very helpful. Um, yes, I made this function called media URL getter. So I find it most convenient in my short code just to pass in the file name for the image because I know what it is when I uploaded it, or I could look at my media library to get the actual file name to the link. Um, but if you're using if you're using a PDF file name and short code, you actually need to get its full URL, and it's just a little function that does that. So I'll make this available. Um, I'll put the slides online so if you want to follow us on Twitter, and um, we'll tweet out the slides tomorrow, and I'll put a link to this little function. Um, but all it does is create create the WordPress database um, with the name of the file, and that turns the, the URL. And um, there, get the attachment URL from the ID. So it's quite useful to save you banging your head against the wall if you're not going to be a stuff for your short codes. Right. I can just. Uh, I should display it like this because the presentation is strange. Um, great, so I would invite you all to go short code that. Um, try making your own. Um, if you've installed commercial themes, often they come with a lot of their own plugins, they're all very complex plugins for doing like. Tabs and accordions and all that kind of thing. So practice with those. Um, and if you've been, if you've searched around for plugins, did any short code plugins make the list? I don't think they did. And um, so there's a lot of there's lots of short code plugins that bring there to 100, 200 short codes to learn guys. It can be harder to learn the word the short codes than the HTML. But anyway, and um, there's one called Synthet that's quite good. It's got 30 short codes. It can help you like that tab content, accordion content. Nice blue key plus format and all that kind of thing. Um, but also if you look at the way it's coded, you can get an idea of what the power of people are coding short codes. Um, so um, yes, and most plugins have short codes. So if you've installed plugins and you're not aware of your short codes, and um, look at the documentation or read through some of the code um, and pick out the short codes codes. Um, but coding your own is much more fun. Do you mean specifically paragraph tags and short codes or paragraph tags in general? Oh, well, I know it isn't in general, but I'm kind of hoping that we can do a short code. Um, yes. Is it a short code you wrote yourself? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, then uh, you should be okay just to call uh, WP Auto P. Um, 
So here, and so I identity in my class, I build up strings and I build up final strings. And then just before you, you start to write the set, and you can call texturize and WPL to feed. And then, so in this view of the world, you would not put any HTML tags inside the content. So you would put P tags in the content, because WP auto P will automatically put them out. Um, but I, th I think that's probably the right way to get what we're trying to get. Um, but one other thing I didn't mention, um, before you output your short code, um, it, it's, it's plugged to call to short code in the content, so that if if someone's put a nested short codes into their content, that the filter runs on that one. I do have any more questions. That's great. Uh, dates up at the end of the night.